Hey, Tab Brothers here. In this video, we're gonna be learning how to do the reverse fault. All right, my brother and I, we're checking out some of the comments on the last videos, read through them, and the reverse fault is what you want to learn next. So that's what we're gonna be learning today. I'm gonna be breaking down the technique, showing you some gradual progression steps to build into the reverse fault, and then giving you some awesome exercises to help you build up the coordination and the strength to do the reverse fault. So the reverse fault is one of the first basic vaults that we're gonna learn in parkour. Um, this one is used a lot for me personally. I use it a lot whenever I'm going down ledges and I don't have much room to do a Kong. I can hit, go to reverse, and drop down to a roll. Um, also, just going over obstacles, when you jump in front of it, you got momentum going forward, but you don't really have time to do a Kong or another vault, you can turn and reverse out of it. Also, this vault is one of the more tricky ones because we're doing a full spin 180 degrees or 360 degrees around during this vault. And as we're going over, you'll notice that your back is toward where you're vaulting. So that can be kind of scary. So it's really important that we learn the technique and then we gradually progress into it. So we go through it real smooth and get it down good. Okay, the first thing with the technique is gonna be the run up and the setup for your vault. So run up, light speed. The key thing with the start off here, the takeoff, is the leg placement. So when you place your legs down, whichever way you want to spin, so if you're more comfortable spinning toward the right side, going this direction, or to your left side, sorry, if you're more comfortable spinning to your left shoulder, then you're going to be taking off your right foot. Then you're also going to be placing your right hand down here. And another thing to think about with the takeoff is, even though it's not uh, mandatory for the vault to cheat to cheat to one side that you're going to spin on. It makes the vault a lot easier, especially at the beginning. So you'll see people when they do the reverse vaults, they run up, cheat a little bit to the side, so you're basically sideways to the rail, and then they take off. Now again, you don't have to do that. Uh, it just makes it a lot easier, and most people do that. But in some situations, you might be diving forward, and then you go into the reverse. So just keep that in mind. So make it a lot easier on the takeoff. Whichever way you're spinning, that leg is gonna be placed down first, and then that hand is gonna come next to it, and then you're gonna spin in the direction. So if you wanna to spin to your right shoulder, your left foot is gonna be placed down, and then the left hand here to start that rotation. So just remember that with the takeoff. Also with the takeoff, when we're jumping into it, at first, you can start with the feet uh, just in a punch. So instead of striding, instead of a stride, because this can be uh, a little bit more difficult, you can punch it first. But then ultimately we want to go into the stride because once we learn the stride takeoff, it's going to make our movement a lot smoother. We're going to be able to continue speed as we're running and just uh, it's a lot cleaner. So ultimately you want to get the stride, but you can start off with a punch if that's easier for you to get the spin down first. So once we reach here, we plant the foot down I'm gonna to spin to my right shoulder here. Now we go into the hand placement and the leg takeoff here. So the hand placement, there are two different types of hand placements that I've seen. And this is probably why some people will get confused with the reverse vault because they don't know how to place their hands to spin in the direction they wanna go. So there's two types of hand placements that I've seen I've used. The first one is the hand that is uh, connected to the foot here, the left, in this case the left hand, that's going to be doing most of the spinning, most of the work, can be turned facing towards you. So when the fingers are faced towards you here, this is going to allow you to spin over the rail easier and then also, so I'll show you real quick, spin here and then allow your hands to let you go here and step out. So that way your wrists and everything don't get twisted all weird. So. Again, I'll show you here, placing the hand here, like you're rotating, uh, this would be clockwise. Rotate the hands clockwise, fingers facing towards you, still in line here. And again, this hand placement's a lot easier when you're cheating at the beginning. So when you cheat to the side to help with the rotation, you can basically just plant that hand here to start your vault. So that's the first one. And then, uh, a lot of times, you know, people will use just one hand on the reverse fault. But if you're using both hands for this one, you're just going to be placing the hands here when you spin. So here, 
and this one immediately releases off. So that's the first one. And this is the one I see a lot of people use, especially when they're going with a lot of speed, they're launching off or something. The second one is, is the one that I use uh, quite often, is where you have your hands basically as you would for a palm spin, so, or a turn ball. So your left hand, instead of being face towards you, fingertips face towards you, it's gonna be faced away from you. And it's gonna be wrapped around the pole here. The other hand is going to be placed underneath, just like you would for a turn ball. So this way you can hit and turn over. Now the reason why I use this one often is because a lot of times when I'm doing my reverse vaults, um, sometimes I'm not even planning to do a reverse vault. I'm just running, jump to the rail, and I'm either going to do a turn ball or a reverse, and I can make the decision from there. Also. This, uh, this hand grip is a lot easier to do if you're not cheating. So if you're going straight at the rail and you're jumping to it, it allows you to dive forward instead of having to turn your hand here and start the spin. You can dive forward and then spin. Those are the two hand placements. Uh, I usually use this one just because it's easier and then I can start from the turn vault and then keep it going. But play around with both because both can be used. I use uh, this one as well when I'm going with a lot of speed and use the one arm. So we got the hand placement, the foot placement. We started our, our vault. Now how do we get up and over this rail? Because a lot of times uh, one of the biggest fears is going and clipping here and flying off. The biggest thing is getting the hips up and over the rail. Your hips is what's initiating the turn or what's going to be one of the first things to go over that rail. So we need to get the hips up high enough so that we can carry our legs over. This is probably the most important thing with all vaults is how we carry the hips. So how do we initiate that jump? When we start here, we need to jump up and bring our knees up to our chest. So that way we get the height here. But then to get our hips up, we want to think of putting our hips or carrying our hips up to our shoulders. This will get our body leveled out so we can get clear or we can clear our legs over the rail here. And we're gonna be initiating the rotation at the same time. So how do we do that? We're gonna be looking over our shoulder here. So this is gonna start the rotation to actually perform the spin during the vault. Now as we perform this vault, a uh, common mistake is to have your hips too far away from your hand. So what this does is when you're doing the reverse vault, even though you might think if I go here, it'll make it easier to clear over the rail. It's actually going to be harder because we're not going to have the stability here. Notice you'll have a lot more strength when the hand is closer to the hips. And then also for balance. So we want to keep the hands nice and close to the hips and to the body. So as we're going over, instead of if you're here, you don't have that stability, you're probably going to uh, lose control and fly off to the side. So I'll show you real quick on here if you go to the side lose control. You can still do it, but you lose control and you don't have that good stability. So if you'll see here, while I'm rotating over my hands, right next to my hips here, the feet are close enough to the chest and it rotates in this angle here to the side. You'll see it come up and over here. That's really important. A lot of people when they start to learn the reverse faults, they'll try to do this at first, one leg at a time. So now that we've got the rotation down, We've gotten the hand and foot placement, we've gone over. Then we're gonna come out into the landing. So as we're spinning out, we wanna land on the balls of the feet. Now we've talked about this plenty of times before. This is the spot where you wanna land and absorb all the pressure. Now at first when we're doing this, I'd recommend starting off with just a basic landing and precision. So landing with both feet precisely. Then I want you to uh, once you get it down solid, work on stepping out. Again, landing on the balls of the feet, but stepping out and running out of the vault. Then also while you're landing, you want to open up. So our legs are tucked as we go over, nice and tight. We have full control here. We go over, then you want to open up the legs and go into the landing. So this just comes with repetition. Once you get it down, and I'll show you in the gradual progression steps, you'll find an easy way just to get that repetition and to get it down. But you're naturally going to open up just right when you start clearing this rail, right when you get over, and then go into the landing. 
Now a common problem or a common issue is when we're doing the reverse fall is we go here and we over rotate, we spin. And that's again with repetition, but also the legs, that means the legs are probably staying tucked and you're spinning too much. So when, again, for the landing, you wanna come out, another way you can slow down the rotation is by opening the legs up a little bit. So if I'm coming here, open the legs up. Slow down their rotation. All right, so we just went over the technique. Now we're gonna go into the gradual progression steps. And this is where we're gonna really develop the move. We're gonna develop our body coordination for the reverse vault and the confidence to go for it. So first, the first gradual progression step is just on the ground here. So I'd recommend going on some grass so you can mess up and not get injured. But the first step is just sideways QM. So uh, if you've been training with us for a little while, you know that QM is a big part of parkour. And the sideways QM is just gonna help us get used to using our upper body in coordination with our lower body here, carrying over to the side, making sure to carry the hands over, one, two, then the legs, one, two, going back and forth. It's just gonna help build up that core and that coordination that we're gonna be using for the reverse fault. So once we get this comfortable, then we're gonna start working on the reverse fault on the ground. So what we're gonna do is take away the fear of the rail altogether and just break it down on the ground. So we're gonna stay low on the balls of the feet, and then we're gonna work on the hand placement you talked about in the technique. So I'm gonna to spin towards my right shoulder, so I'm gonna place my left hand down first, then followed by my right facing, uh, fingers facing away from me. So it's gonna look like this. And then carrying over. So you're doing the reverse fall, but just on the ground level. Now when you're doing this step, make sure to focus on really getting those hips up and the legs tucked in close to your body. So here, here. Notice how my body's moving. The hips are going up. My head and shoulders are leaning down a little bit. And I'm jumping up off of the side, just like we would for the reverse fall, and carrying over. So once we get comfortable with that, then we're gonna move to a ledge. Now, I'm just gonna demonstrate on this rail here, but I'd recommend finding a ledge that's about waist height and it can be you know, pretty wide, whatever you're comfortable with. And what you're gonna start off with at first is just going over the ledge sideways. So we can use the corner at first so we don't have to worry about clipping the ledge or the rail. We're gonna work on really getting our hips up and over the rail here sideways. So it'll look like this. Starting in a squat, jump up, and carry over. Really work on getting those hips up and arms straight and close to the hips. So that way you can work on that balance and that strength. Once you get comfortable on the corner, just go off onto the actual ledge. All right, so we're good. We can get our feet over. Now we're gonna go to the next step, and that is actually starting to perform the reverse fall. So what I like to do is, especially when I was gradually progressing into it, I would practice with the, um, the hand placement as I would for a turn vault. So this way, I can pretty much go over the rail and then spin afterwards, so I don't have to have the spin going on you know, as I'm going over the rail. I just found it a lot easier and a lot less scary. Now we're going to add just a, a little bit of spin afterwards, after we start to clear it, and then add more and more spin until we get our reverse fall. So starting here, up, over, spin a little bit, and then gradually increase the spin and the turn until you have your reverse. More. And. and then once you get the reverse fall, you're able to hop over sideways. Then I want you to start adding speed and start adding, uh, playing around with both of those hand positioning. So uh, using the turn vault hand positioning, then also the one hand face towards you. And work on going with a little bit, uh, with adding more and more speed as you get better. Here. And then as you get these better, don't just stop there. Work on precisely landing on a certain area. Also, a lot of us tend to, when we're doing or practicing reverse vaults, we'll end up spinning and going off one way or the other. And in some situations, you're gonna have to go in a straight line or a certain area. So practice on going in a straight line, stepping out, and knowing exactly where you're gonna be landing. So 
lay down a piece of tape, uh, have a little marker, and work on precisely landing in that area. All right, so those were the gradual progression steps to get your reverse fall. Now I'm gonna give you some exercises to really help develop that core coordination and strength to actually perform this vault. So the first exercise is uh, what we showed earlier. The first progression step is sideways QM. It's gonna help develop that core and coordination and upper body strength. So sideways QM. The second exercise is another version of QM. I picked this up from Laurent uh, during a workshop and it's basically just, he called it, I think he called it skiing QM because you're mimicking pretty much a skier. You're staying low to the ground in a squat and we're gonna work on developing the muscles here in the core and the lats to hold yourself up as we continue in a straight line. So it'll look like this. Here, here, here. And as you move forward with each hand, you're going to push yourself and carry the hips over to the side that you're pushing. So it looks like this again. a fun one. The next exercise is really going to help develop that core flexibility so we don't have to worry about clipping our feet as we go over the, the rail here. It's also going to help on developing the strength. These are carry throughs. You've probably seen these before. Start off in a push-up position and we're going to walk our feet all the way through and up and back. Now if you're having trouble, say the flexibility is not there to carry your arms or carry your legs through your arms like that, totally normal. Just uh, elevate yourself up with some books or yoga blocks. The next exercise is just going to really be focusing on driving those hips up and getting used to getting our hips up in the air to perform the vault. So what we're going to do is find a rail, a ledge, about waist height, and just focus on going from this position here. We're going to drive the hips up to the shoulders and get the arms nice and straight and close to the hips. So it's going to look like this. When you're doing this, you want to be able to feel the weight transfer from the legs up to the arms and have a good sturdy feel on this rail. It's going to help really develop, for a lot of the vaults, that feeling and developing the core. This next exercise is 360 jumps because we're going to be performing a 360 spin over this rail during the reverse fall. So we're going to need to understand the 360 movement and also have the coordination to, to do it. So first, 360, landing straight, and then 360 back. Just using the arms to spin. So an easy way to do this is to pretend like you're punching someone here and you're uh, taking this elbow close to your body. So here and here for spins. So here and really focus on getting that good landing solid. It's going to help a lot for the reverse fall. Another thing you want to think about when doing your spins is your body alignment. So a lot of times when we're doing spins, we'll get thrown off if we're leaning too far back. We're not perfectly aligned here. You want to, your body to be perfectly straight head looking straight forward or spotting somewhere. And then also keep in mind the legs. When we open them up, they'll slow us down a little bit. When we close them tight, we'll spin faster. So just show you an example. I was holding the legs tight together. I think I did maybe a 720. And then uh, if I open them up a, a little bit before, I'll open up to the 360. It's harder to spin. So keep that in mind. Focus on those exercises, especially if you're having trouble um, physically performing the reverse vault. They'll help a lot. All right, so that wraps up the reverse vault tutorial. Um, this one was pretty lengthy and in depth, so let me know in the comments below if you want to shorten it down a little bit or if you like it longer like this, uh, just let me know. Make sure to subscribe for more tutorials. And as always, train safe, and I'll see you in the next video.